Okay, so if you've never used watercolor pencils before, I've used Artist Loft for quite a while, but also Crayola has a brand of watercolor pencils that are also great to use. So one of the things with watercolor pencils is you start off by coloring your section and then you take the paintbrush, a wet paintbrush, to it. But what I find is if you want some areas that are lighter, you need to go lightly with your watercolor pencil. If you're trying to go darker and get a more vibrant color, you need to push down harder with your pencil and you need to coat it a lot better. So there's times where you can just very carefully almost scribble the color and that will actually be like a nice washed out blue or you can go over it without leaving any white and it will be darker. So if you're used to coloring with colored pencils, watercolor pencils are really easy to use because they mimic what a color pencil would be, which means they act the same. until you actually add water to them. And you can even see the texture of the paper and you can feel it as you're using your watercolor pencil. Because this is considered a watercolor paper, so it's thicker and it's more textured than a regular piece of paper. What it does is it allows us to add more water to it without having the paper tear. You can still use a regular piece of paper, but I do find that you have to be a lot more careful with how much water you use on your art projects. There we go. Let's add a little bit down here underneath this wave. Maybe just make the waves a little bit darker. And now I'm going to use the light blue with the same method, but crisscrossing over the dark blue a little bit. And this will also make us feel like this is the shallow end of the ocean, because the shallow end of the ocean is usually a lighter blue. So I'm going to go ahead and color in the rest of this picture before I start adding my watercolors or my water to it. So hang out with me. Let's finish up this drawing and then I'll get back to you and show you how it works with getting the water onto your page. <laughs>
colored in our entire picture and we're ready to start painting. You may notice that I did some areas where it was darker all on one side and I kept up with every single side of every object because the light source is coming from over here which would mean that a shadow would remain on the other side of these objects. So that's one of the reasons why I did that. Now, we're going to get our paintbrushes. You just wet it and then you can start doing the watercolor. Now when the areas are very light, you're not going to notice too much of a difference. This is going to be a very light blue sky and that's okay. But the magic is actually going to happen once we start getting into the areas that are closest to us because there's a lot more color on those items. And just like anything else, you don't want to mix your colors. So I wouldn't want to take a paintbrush over all of it and just hope for the best because the two colors or the three colors in that matter will actually bleed together and just look muddy. So just like you were doing a paint by number or um, a coloring page, you want to separate your colors. Okay, so now I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to start in a different area. And you can actually start seeing it really look like a watercolor with the brighter colors. There we go. And for the last step that you could do, if you really want, um, these pencils can also be dipped into water and used to add darker lines. But you only want to do this at the end because once the pencils are wet, they don't work as well when you're trying to color in your whole entire area. So you only want to use them to color in areas when they're dry. And then to do little touch-up jobs like this, you dip the pencil in water and you start drawing again. Just to get some of those extra little shaded areas. Like this. And then You can take your paintbrush over it again.
And last but not least, when it's dry enough, 